This article is about the bombing that took place in 2006. For the later bombing see 2007 Al-Askari Mosque bombing The 2006 Al-Askari Mosque bombing occurred at the Al-Askari Mosque in the Iraqi city of Samara. On February 22, 2006, at about 6.44 a.m. local time, the attack on the mosque, one of the holiest sites in Shi Islam, is not claimed by any group. You. President George W. Bush suggested that the evidence indicates that it was an al-Qaeda plot. The mosque was severely damaged, but no injuries occurred in the blasts. The bombing was followed by retaliatory violence with over a hundred dead bodies being found the next day and well over 1,000 people killed in the days following the bombing, by some counts, over 1,000 on the first day alone. The bombing, on February 22, 2006, at 6.44 a.m., explosions occurred at Al-Askari Mosque, effectively destroying its golden dome and severely damaging the mosque. Several men wearing military uniforms had earlier entered the mosque, tied up the guards there and set explosives, resulting in the blast. Two bombs were set off by five to seven men dressed as personnel of the Iraqi special forces who entered the shrine during the morning. No injuries were reported following the bombing. However, the northern wall of the shrine was damaged by the bombs, causing the dome to collapse and destroying three-quarters of the structure along with it. Following the blast, American and Iraqi forces surrounded the shrine and began searching houses in the area. Five police officers responsible for protecting the mosque were taken into custody. The dome had been repaired by April 2009 and the shrine reopened to visitors. Responsibility and Accusations No group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack on the mosque. Al-Qaeda in Iraq Although Al-Qaeda in Iraq denied any involvement in statements released in June 2006, it was reported that Iraqi commandos and troops had captured and seriously wounded Yusri Farqa Muhammad Ali, a Tunisian also known as Abu Qudamar al-Tunzi, after he and 15 other foreign fighters stormed an Iraqi checkpoint 25 miles north of Baghdad. According to Iraqi National Security Advisor, the Morawafak al Rubai. Abu Qudamar confessed to taking part in the attack on al Askari Mosque in Samarra and gave a detailed account of how the attack took place. Al Rubai said Iraqi security forces had yet to capture the mastermind of the mosque attack, Haitham al Badri, an Iraqi and leader of one of al Qaeda in Iraq's cells, who was later killed in an airstrike on August 2, 2007. Al-Rubai said Al-Badri, Abu Qudamar, four Saudi nationals and two other Iraqis stormed the mosque Feb. 21, rounded up the shrine's guards, members of Iraq's facility protection service, and bound their hands. The group then spent the rest of the night rigging the mosque with bombs. At dawn the next day, they detonated the explosives, bringing down the dome. In an August 2006 press conference, U.S. President George W. Bush stated, It's pretty clear, at least the evidence indicates, that the bombing of the shrine was an al-Qaeda plot, all intending to create sectarian violence. Quote, in May 2007, also, Iraqi officials blamed al-Qaeda of the attack. Before his death, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi listed among his goals the incitement of a civil war between Iraq's Shiites and Sunnis. In September 2006, Iraqi officials announced the capture of Hamid Juma Faris Jari al-Saidi in connection with the bombing, allegedly done on his orders by Haitham al-Badri. Ol Badri was killed in August 2007. USA and Israel Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad blamed the United States and Israel for the attack. He claimed that these heinous acts are committed by a group of Zionists and occupiers that have failed. Quote, 
He warned, amid a crowd of protesters, that the United States would not be saved from the wrath and power of the justice-seeking nations by resorting to bombings like the one that occurred at al Asghari Mosque. According to AlertNet, Hezbollah leader Saeed Hassan Nasrallah, speaking from the Lebanese capital, Beirut, echoed the opinions of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and accused the United States of attacking the shrine to cause tension between the Sunnis and Shiites. In the Middle East, violent reactions. As a result of the bombing, there was widespread violence throughout Iraq. According to the Sunni Clerical Association of Muslim Scholars, 168 mosques were attacked in the two days following the bombing, while 10 imams were murdered and 15 others kidnapped. The Shiite-controlled Interior Ministry said it could only confirm figures for Baghdad, where it had reports of 19 mosques attacked, one cleric killed and one abducted. The normal daily patrols of U.S. coalition forces and Iraqi security forces were temporarily suspended in Baghdad during the few days following the bombing. February 22 in Najaf, shops were closed, while residents gathered at the city's 1920 Revolution Square for demonstrations. In al all mosques, shops and markets were closed. Three Sunni Muslim clerics were shot dead by Shia militiamen. A civilian, Hamid Rashid, was shot dead by random shooting in Baghdad. Attacks on Sunni mosques, especially in eastern Baghdad, started right away after the news of the bombing spread on the afternoon. Groups of armed men in civil vehicles seen in the streets. Dot. February 23 up to 21 Sunni mosques were attacked in reprisals for the bombing. The attacks included shootings and acts of arson. Three mosques were completely destroyed by explosives. In the mainly Shia city of Basra, armed men in police uniforms seized 11 Sunni Muslim men, including some Saudi, Turkish and Egyptian nationals, from the MENA prison. The seized men were later found dead and were believed to have been tortured. Ninety reprisal attacks on mosques were reported. Iraq's Kurdish Sunni president Jalal Talabani warned that Iraq was on the brink of civil war. Shia militiamen killed 47 Sunni civilians and left their bodies in a ditch near Baghdad on February 23. All of the bodies had their hands bound. Together, three journalists, including Atwar Bajat, working for Al Arabia Television were kidnapped and killed by Sunni insurgents while covering the bombing. Their bodies were found on the outskirts of Samara. The journalist and her crew were Sunni Muslims. Dot. February 24 – Baghdad was relatively calm on February 24, despite reports of minor clashes between members of a Shia militia and Sunni insurgents in the south of the city. In Basra, where the curfew was not in effect, on Friday Sunni insurgents kidnapped three children of a Shia legislator and prominent member of the Shia Islamic DAAWA party. In the city of Madain, Sunni insurgents fired two rockets at the tomb of Silman the Persian, causing damage but no casualties. Dot. February 25 – Fierce sectarian violence erupted on February 25 despite an extraordinary daytime curfew, killing more than 24 people in a series of incidents around the country, including a brazen attack by Sunni insurgents on the funeral procession of an Iraqi television journalist Atwar Bajat. The violence took place even though a daytime curfew emptied the streets of Baghdad and three neighboring governorates for a second day, the government extended the daylight security clampdown with a ban on cars on February 27. According to Karbala News, Net and Wan Cole, Sunni insurgents blew up a Shiite shrine in Bashir, south of Tars Kermito. Twenty insurgents attacked the shrine of Salman the Persian. They killed the guards and placed explosives at the tomb, then blew it up, destroying it. Dot. 
February 26, five days of violence left more than 200 people dead and many Sunni mosques smashed. Despite daytime curfews on Baghdad and surrounding provinces, there were further ominous signs of the ethnic cleansing of once mixed neighborhoods in and around Baghdad. Scores of Shia families were reported to have fled homes in the rest of western Muslim suburb of Abu Ghraib. Shia community leaders said they were being housed temporarily in schools and other buildings in Shia areas. In the latest round of attacks, a bomb destroyed a minibus as it was leaving a bus station in the Shia town of Hilla, 60 miles south of Baghdad, killing five people and wounding three. Dot. February 27 According to Al Jazeera, the Iraqi government said that since the bombing 379 people had been killed and 458 wounded, the Baghdad morgue confirmed they had received 309 bodies since the bombing, most of them victims of violence. Morgue data showed this was double the average. It handled 10,080 bodies in 2005. Political reactions. Iraq Prime Minister Ibrahim al Jafari has urged Iraqis to stay unified and peaceful, saying the attack was an effort to incite violence. He has also called for three days of national mourning. However, talks between him and a prominent Sunni Muslim group are put on hold as the Sunni Iraqi Accord front quits discussions on forming a new government due to the recent violence. At the same time, a government organization called the Sunni Endowments that maintains Sunni mosques and shrines condemned the attack. On February 25, Al Jafari blamed terrorists for the crisis. The Iraqi people have one enemy. It is terrorism and only terrorism. Dot, dot, dot. There are no Sunnis against Shiites or Shiites against Sunnis. Despite the Sunni boycott, President Jalal Talabani pressed ahead with a meeting that he had called to avert a dissent toward a civil war. After discussions with Shiites, Kurds and leaders of a smaller Sunni group, he warned about the danger of all-out war. The government is extending a curfew it imposed in parts of the country on Friday to calm tensions sparked by an attack on a Shia shrine. Iraqi Defense Minister Sardoun al Dulami warned about the danger of a long civil war. Also, he said that Iraq would not hesitate to dispatch tanks to the streets to end violence and impose security. The minister also denied any involvement by what he called interior ministry commandos in the attack that targeted Harith Suleiman al Dari, leader of the Association of Muslim Scholars, Sunni and Shiite clerics in Iraq. Iraq have agreed to prohibit killings and to ban attacks on each other's mosques in an effort to ease sectarian violence. Worldwide, U.S. President George W. Bush warned about the threat of civil war and expressed support for the Iraqi government. On February 25, Bush called seven Iraqi political leaders in an extraordinary round of telephone diplomacy aimed at getting talks restarted about forming a permanent government. On February 28, Bush decried the latest surge in sectarian violence and said that for Iraqis, the choice is chaos or unity. Quote, in congressional testimony, National Intelligence Director John Negroponte said a civil war in Iraq could lead to a broader conflict in the Middle East, pitting the region's Sunni and Shiite powers against one another. UK Foreign Secretary Jack Straw called the bombing a criminal and sacrilegious act, urging Iraqis to show restraint and avoid retaliation. Zameh Khalil Zid, Washington's ambassador to Iraq, and the top U.S. commander in the country, Gen. George Casey, issued a joint statement saying the U.S. would contribute to the shrine's reconstruction. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has laid blame on the United States and coalition forces. They invade the shrine and bomb there because they oppose God and justice. Ahmadinejad said, referring to the U.S.-led multinational forces in Iraq.
religious reactions. Iraq, Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani sent instructions to his followers forbidding attacks on Sunni mosques, especially the major ones in Baghdad. In calling for seven days of mourning, he hinted that religious militias could be given a bigger security role if the government was incapable of protecting holy shrines. On February 25, Ayatollah Sistani called for Iraq's powerful tribes to be deployed to protect the country's holy places after three attacks on Shia shrines in four days. Ayatollah Sistani, who received a tribal delegation from Kufa, asked that the Iraqi tribes reclaim their role of protecting the shrines, said an official in Sistani's office in the Shia clerical center of Najaf. After the crimes against the places of worship, including the blowing up of the mausoleum in Samarra and the attacks against the tombs of Silman the Persian and Imam Ali bin Musa al-Rida, the tribes must take a stand and claim a role in the protection of these sites. Muqtada al sadr condemned the attack and called for calm. Having called to stop mutual attacks, Sadr ordered members of his militia to protect Sunni mosques in majority Shia areas in southern Iraq. He called for Iraqi unity and warned against a plan by the occupation to spark a sectarian war. He called on Sunni groups such as the Association of Muslim Scholars to form a joint panel and ordered his militia to defend Shia holy sites across Iraq. On February 25, Sunni and Shiite clerics agreed to prohibit killing members of the two sects and banning attacks on each other's mosques in an effort to ease tension between Iraq's Muslim communities following sectarian violence after the bombing of a Shiite shrine. The agreement was made during a meeting between representatives of Shiite cleric Sada, Shiite religious leader Jawad al khalisi and members of the influential Sunni Sunni Association of Muslim Scholars at the Abu Hanifa Mosque, a Sunni place of worship. According to Wang Cole, three Iraqi clerics all employed their influence and authority among the Shiite rank and file to make the Samara bombing work for them. Politically, Sistani expanded his militia and stayed at the forefront of the movement by encouraging peaceful rallies. Abdulaziz al-Hakim used the explosion in Samarra to bolster his own authority. He remonstrated with the American ambassador, saying it was not reasonable to expect the religious Shiites, who won the largest block of seats in parliament, to give up their claim on the Ministry of Interior, and that, indeed, Khalilzad had helped provoke the troubles with his assertions to that effect earlier. Muqtada al sadr used the incident to push for a U.S. withdrawal from Iraq, something he has wanted since the fall of Saddam. Abroad, Supreme Jurisprudent Khamenei blamed Bush and his Israeli allies, an allegation widely believed to be true in Iraq. Iran Ayatollah Ali Khamenei urged Shiites not to take revenge on Sunni Muslims for the attack on the Samara Shrine. India, Saeed Ali Nazir Saeed Abakati, a leading Shia cleric from Lucknow, India, held Al Qaeda responsible for destruction of the Al Asghari Mosque in Samara, Iraq. Analysts' views. I think this is probably the most dangerous event that has occurred since the fall of Saddam Hussein. Former CIA Middle East specialist Reuel Mark Jarek told CNN. It risks our entire enterprise in Iraq. We may be on the verge of taking communal violence to the next level, warned Joanne Cole, professor of Middle East and History at the University of Michigan, who called Wednesday an apocalyptic day in Iraq. It's very clear that the Shiites are interpreting this chain of events as evidence that the Americans are weak and can't protect Shiite interests said Cole. And now Americans are having to come back to the Shiites and ask them to be magnanimous and give away a lot of what they've won in elections. It was always going to be a very Howard sell, but now it's an impossible argument. Shiites aren't going to give away any power at all at this point, he said, adding that, it's possible that there could be a hung parliament, the government would collapse, and you'd have to go to new elections, and that would be a disaster in the present circumstances.
William F. Buckley, Jr., considered the bombing as an indication of a general failure of the U.S. policy in Iraq. WikiLeaks data. The October 2010 Iraq War documents leak shared new light on the events of February to March 2006. In particular, the logs reveal that U.S. soldiers immediately reported an explosion of retaliatory killings, kidnappings, tortures, mosque attacks, and open street fighting, even as U.S. commanders including Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld were downplaying media reports of a surge in killings. The previous official death toll for post-bombing sectarian fighting of three to 400, was based on information from the Shiite-led government and the Sadr-run Health Ministry, which was directly involved in atrocities according to the logs. According to Washington Post reporter Ellen Nick Meyer, her contemporary report of 1,300-plus casualties, dismissed at the time as an outlier, was in fact an undercount. The actual deaths, she says, exceeded 3,000.